Besides removing so-called offensive language and images from textbooks, the PC police have also done a number on American history. The history books are quite critical of the U.S., of showing all the terrible things that we've done. Racism, slavery, and, and uh, the internment of Japanese during World War II, they do not extend the same critical gaze to any other civilization. This was something that came up in one of my grandson's classes. The assignment was to decide whether Columbus really did deserve a holiday, and the children were given some rather biased selections to read. The Spanish commander gave orders that the leading citizens, who numbered over a hundred and were roped together, were to be tied to stakes set in the ground and burned alive. And all the children had decided that he didn't deserve a holiday. How do American children do in history? The one area where they do absolutely worse is U.S. history. Uh, the majority of our high school seniors score below basic, which is as low as you can go. In many cases, history isn't just being whitewashed, it's not even taught at all. Here's a question for you. The war in Vietnam was fought between blank and blank. 22% replied, the war in Vietnam was fought between North and South Korea. The average course spends four minutes on Vietnam. Another reason why the textbooks don't seem to get into anything real is that they're usually not written by the people whose names are on the covers. They are written by flunkies. <laughs> I'm reading one of these books, Pathways to the Present, and all of a sudden I say to myself, no, wait a minute, didn't I just read this? And sure enough, right over here in this other book, paragraph after paragraph, these two books, by two completely different sets of authors. Are identical. Textbooks are almost set up to fail just by the way they're authored. Professor Brinkley. Hi, good morning. Chris Jenkins from Fox News. This is Columbia University professor Alan Brinkley. As the school's chief academic officer or provost, Brinkley wrote this $60 textbook entitled The Unfinished Nation. His 2008 edition did not have its facts straight about the number of terror suspects charged since the attacks of September 11, 2001. Sir, you talk about the suspects rounded up since September 11th, and at the end you write, quote, only one such suspect was ever charged with a crime. That's not correct, is it, sir? You have nothing to say. At least 129 suspects had been convicted of terror-related charges in U.S. federal courts when Professor Brinkley's book was published. We posted their names on foxnews.com. We asked him if he's planning to correct these inaccuracies in his next edition. Here's his emailed response to Fox News. Quote, The Unfinished Nation will appear in a new edition later this year, and you can judge for yourself at that point how it treats the issues. That new edition is expected to cost $77.81. The question remains, how are these mistakes making their way into textbooks? They're selling them on the basis of how they look. And in a way, they look good. They got color pictures all over them. They got boxes all over the place. Reading programs are 50 to 80 million dollar investments, so you certainly want to get, get it the way the customer wants it. Unfortunately, the customer isn't the teacher. In 30 open territory states, publishers sell textbooks to individual school districts. Another 20 states have what's called textbook adoption, where the Board of Education chooses textbooks for the entire state. They respond to commercial pressures that, that are coming not from the marketplace but from the textbook adoption committees, particularly in California and Texas. Those are the, the places where the, these various pressure groups focus their attention. Every group wants to um, impose its will on textbooks. You're trying to brainwash or propagandize children in the hope that they're going to grow up thinking about things the way you want them to think about things. So if you're a um, left-wing Marxist group, uh, you want them to grow up thinking that America is a oppressive capitalist plot to undo the working class. If you're a conservative group, you want uh, kids to grow up thinking that America is a perfect place uh, where everybody should enthusiastically wave the flag. And publishers began reacting to all these pressures 
uh, by censoring whatever was submitted to them. This is so deeply ingrained in the textbook industry that they don't even have to be pressured anymore. So the point is not to teach but to indoctrinate. The point is to create a world that doesn't exist.